why Yoroi? Why why not other wallets that are connected to the web, like Infino, Infinito on a uh, mobile device or uh, any other wallets? So, uh, Nico, what what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question, and uh, a lot of people have been asking us that. So I think it's like. Uh, pretty good to start with that. So uh, what happens is that uh, we have like multiple reasons to create Joroy. I'm going to try to explain all of them. The first one is that uh, sometimes uh, there is like a lot of wallets that support like multiple blockchains and you can find them for like mobile, desktop. But the problem is that uh, they don't go very deep in what is like all the features and technology of a specific wallet of a specific blockchain. So uh, what happens is that in Cardano, we're developing so many technologies. And uh, the best way to take advantage of them is that you actually have a wallet that take advantage of this. And uh, you can see in other, uh, for example, blockchains for like, I don't know, for privacy coins that actually they're not using the privacy setting in this like generic wallet. And also, uh, the problem is that sometimes uh, all these wallets, uh, they're known to be like so interesting in what is Cardano. So for example, uh, right now it's really important for Cardano to get integration with Trezor, with Layer. And uh, for this, uh, we are going to be the first one like uh, implementing uh, some of the hardware wallets that are coming. Uh, there is already an implementation for Trezor for, for another wallet. But uh, we expect to be the first one to be implemented layer support. Uh, and this should be coming like pretty soon. And uh, this is the first reason. So the first reason was pretty much that it's really important that we have a wallet that's always implementing the latest features for Cardano and is always putting Cardano as their first priority. The second one is related to what Cardano is trying to achieve. So Cardano is trying to uh, uh, bring like financial services and financial inclusion for the world. And a lot of the wallets that we have right now is just to make transactions. And they're like still like pretty tight in what is the crypto world. And when we're talking about the financial inclusion, uh, this is not so much just in the crypto, but right, crypto is just a tool to do this. So what are we aiming for Euro is that Euro is going to be helping people to connect to the financial services. And what do this mean in practice? Basically, Euro, we are going to be looking at integrating like credit cards that could work from, directly from uh, your ADA. Also that maybe you could even like create like bank accounts that are going to be holding AIDA. And the idea is that, for example, if you are in South America, in Africa, you're going to be able to like actually have access to like uh, the financial world to buy like some assets. Uh, for that, uh, uh, it's something important to mention that probably you will have to go to uh, KYC process AML. And also we are working in that. So Joroy is going to be like pretty helpful. So people that are unbanked to actually access financial services. And the third part is that uh, there is uh, uh, there is some uh, specific problems uh, with some wallets that are related to security. And uh, most of them, for example, they implement libraries that are not really secure. And we really, really care about security. And that's how you have seen that the values is like uh, pretty good. Although uh, the ecosystem was needed in a light, light wallet, and that's why uh, IHK developed uh, Icarus, and we decided to, from that specific implementation from IHK, start working in Joroy. But uh, we need to have better quality wallets, and that has been a problem because, for example, some of the wallets that are currently in the market right now, uh, they don't respect your privacy. Some of the wallets, uh, if you, for example, if you do a transaction at 0 0.17 ADA, they're going to charge you the double because they are trying to make money out of you or they are going to be doing all their stuff that are like really tricky. And we want to put like uh, privacy first and also uh, security for all the users. Wow, that's pretty amazing stuff. So I, I just learned a couple of uh, neat things just now. So you're always going to be used to interface with the financial services basically th you know, throughout the world or any type of financial interactions. Is there something specific about Euroi that that makes it more capable than say Daedalus at doing that? Like, is it because it's using a web browser or it's, uh, you mentioned uh, the libraries, is it using better libraries or what kind of technology makes it so uh, uh, 
capable of connecting with financial? I mean, I know you said it's more private and more secure, but is there any other comments on that? Uh, yeah, uh, so basically, uh, the Delus, uh, I, I think it's an incredible wallet, but uh, IHK is like, uh, their vision for the Delus is different than the vision that we have for Droid. Uh, if you go to the page of Daedalus, basically uh, Daedalus is like a full node. That means that it uh, allows the entire blockchain and also they're looking for integrating with dApps. Well, I think this is pretty important. Uh, we think that there is a other specific niche that's like uh, financial services and integration with like more of the traditional world that is going to be missing. And we want to focus and prioritize this specific part for a crypto wallet. So that's why they're going to be different, and maybe uh, the Delus or other wallets are also going to be doing that, but uh, probably in Joroid because it's our main focus, we're going to be always be the first one, uh, so that it's going to mean that we are going to be ahead of the rest. Wow, that's pretty neat. So Daedalus is like a, the full node, like you said, uh, full power node, handling transactions, and Euro is going to live out there on the internet, dealing with all the financial matters. Neat stuff. Awesome. I wanted I wanted to add something quickly. Um, I think that's very good a very good point that Nicolas brought up as far as sort of targeting the unbanked and decreasing the barrier to entry with Euroi. Um, I think that's um, you know like everyone's not going to have the same technology or the same advantages as you know, developed countries, de developing countries, or have a much more difficult have a higher barrier to entry to scale in order to get to that next level. And the fact that you mentioned that there are third party companies that are creating wallets and are scalping, basically making profits off of their their users, that could really hurt the developing world because um, the developing nations, because first of all, they're living on a lot less than developed nations are living on per day. And those fees are killer. So I think it's very important that an actual endorsed wallet by Emergo is going to provide that safety and security for the most vulnerable people that are going to be using this wallet. I think that's really good. Um, as far as you said that there's some kind of derivation between Daedalus and, um, and Uroi, but is it, um, from what my understanding is, they're both using the Cardano Rust language. So are you guys making a derivation on that language. I mean, I, I was reading about the cryptographic primitives that include, that are behind the language. And since they're, these are the most fundamental, that's the most fundamental code that you can go, is it, how much creativity is coming from Emergo in, in branching out? Is it just like following Daedalus, like Daedalus releases staking, now you're always going to release staking? Or is it like, are you guys going to, branch in the future to do your own do your own thing i'm not sure if my question is coming out clearly or not uh, yeah i completely understand uh there is uh something that i would like uh, to specify which is like uh the delus is built mostly in haskell so uh in the other end uh you're always following a new implementation which is in rust so uh everything that's uh related to the delus haskell uh, related to the libraries and everything uh, that's for Euro, uh, basically we are following the uh, Rust implementation. And so we are not using Daedalus as, uh, as a leader. We are not actually following what they do, but rather we are impl doing the changes by ourselves and directly. And the idea is that uh, for Emurgo, Euro is something that's on top of our priorities. And for IHK, they are doing so many products and they're like uh, subdividing so many uh, different services, protocol and uh, research. So it's difficult to like put all the people doing everything. So you have like a specific group of people doing something. So I think like maybe for this specific like wallet, maybe uh, because we are like fully focused in Joroi, we could get to be a little ahead of the rest. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, and one thing I, I want to add is another benefit of having Emergo create Yodoi is that we have kind of a compatible incentive with the rest of the community in the sense that our business model at Emergo is in part to please the people who participated in the Cardano pre-sale and who are participating in the ecosystem, right? Because that's where we got our money from. And so that means when we created Yodoi, we open sourced the code for it, 
And also, as we're creating the mobile version of Yodoi, we've also been open sourcing the libraries and the bindings that we've been creating to create that. So if you look at other wallets out there that support Cardano that are uh, also light wallets, they tend to work on closed source models, not only on the application code itself, but also in any libraries they create to fac facilitate that binding. Hey, that's a, you know, Sebastian, now that you bring that up, I, was, uh, I noticed earlier this week, there were some announcements that uh, Yoroi went open source. So it's going out to the community uh, of developers. Is Emergo, can, is it possible for Emergo to be responsible for all these different developers out there that they, they get their hands on that code and they make a different wallet and then people question security? How does that work? Uh, so uh, I think uh, we are pushing Cardano to uh, specifically what is open source. That it means that it's, uh, for people that don't know, it, it just doesn't mean to open uh, to uh, to make the code public. It means that also we want to be accepting like contributions from like uh, the developer and the Cardano community. And I think this is pretty important because it's not only related to the code, but also related to features are where we want to aim. Uh, like uh, some of the features. From Jeroy. Related to the what is the code, uh, the code is uh, we have been working for Jeroy for like already for a few months, and we are really comfortable with the entire code base uh, because, as you know, uh, part of like uh, the base of Jeroy is built on top of Icarus, and it's been uh, already like as I said, some months, and we are really comfortable with the entire code base, and also we have like. Uh, work, uh, we already started working in the implementation with Trezor, which we are pretty close, and also uh, Layer is coming. So right now we are like pretty confident that we can like review correctly all the changes that uh, the uh, the community could propose. And the idea is that uh, depending of what is the type of the change, for example, if you have a change that only changes part of the UI, maybe it's not going to be that thorough in how many people need to review it. For example. Uh, Seva could be like uh, just review it and accept it, but other uh, changes that maybe are like closer to like the logical part of like how the transactions are handled, that will like take a little more time because multiple people will have to review it to make sure that everything is like correct. But uh, this is something really good about open source that also this could be seen as a problem, but also other people from the community are going to be reviewing these uh, uh, code proposals. And in general, what you get as a result from open sourcing is that you have more security because there are more eyes and looking at all the changes, all the code. And sometimes what you see is that uh, when you have something closed source, like a hacker could be like looking at the code and because maybe uh, with like three or four persons that are working a specific project didn't get to catch or see something, they find a vulnerability that could be exploited. But with open source and multiple developers looking for uh, to improve like the product, uh, this is like less likely to happen. So the benefit of being open source uh, far outweighs the risk of a malicious developer getting a hold of the code. That, that makes sense. And as far as the complexity of how to add to your the open source project, how easy is it? How would you compare it to Haskell? In, um, how would you compare Node.js and WebAssembly to Haskell? Would do you foresee a lot of developers contributing to 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 the platform? Uh, in this part, I will split uh, the changes uh, in two or three parts. Uh, the first part that is going to be everything that's like in the front end with uh, JavaScript. Uh, this part is already uh, it's open source, and it's the thing that we are like putting open up with the community, but. Uh, the way that Joroy works, everything that's cryptographic, uh, it's not so secure to do uh, to be written in JavaScript. So it was developed uh, in Rust by IOHK, and then we are compiling this code to WebAssembly, which uh, is compatible with uh, with Joroy. And then we are uh, communicating with the WebAssembly implementation. But uh, currently, uh, the implementation in Rust is not open source. So this part probably in the future. Uh, when it's open source, we are going to be able to like uh, to be able to receive like changes from the community, and these changes are going to be translated to WebAssembly changes that will like um, be connected to Euroi. 